Bees are endangered on a global scale. Since time immemorial, man and bee have lived in relative harmony. But modern agricultural practices are threatening the bee and the food it pollinates, pushing them both towards extinction. Are you still living? Correct. My name is Amia Brown. I'm a high school senior in Los Angeles, and like most people, I didn't give bees a whole lot of thought. But I wanted to see what I could do about this crisis on a local level. Today, I uh, just wanted to welcome you here to the Honey Love Sanctuary. Uh, this is where we bring uh, bees that we rescue uh, from the city. While not great in size, the beekeeping community is committed to spreading the love of bees and helping people become beekeepers. So this hive is what's called diverse. There's different kinds of bees in there. And that's nature's plan is diversity. Okay, so where'd the queen go? There she is. So here, hold on to that and take a look at the queen. Right here. See her? The round dot. She's it very long. Really now the reason she's long is that she has to have a long abdomen to lay an egg in the cell. In this close-knit community, I found others entering beekeeping just like me. Six months ago, why did I just suddenly start to become a beekeeper? I had a little bit of extra time and um, I just got interested in, uh, in starting to produce food and grow food. It just like I got more interested in food and food that I bought started to get taste less and less good, you know, and, and the food that I grew myself just started tasting like really delicious. Um, you know, and it's just, it's kind of fun to have bees and uh, I live in Altadena, I've got neighbors on both sides of me. So it kind of feels like, uh, it's sort of like a part of like a beekeeping underground. It's sort of like, you know, a little kind of a revolutionary act to have bees in your backyard. So the short answer is it's just really fun. Hi, I'm Peter. I'm a backwards beekeeper. It's treatment free beekeeping. Uh, also a chicken keeper. Alright, now they're doing here. I began to find that hives behind houses were not an uncommon occurrence. This is a wild hive. So this is totally organic. We call ourselves backwards beekeepers because uh, we use wild uh, local bees. Um, so they're still pretty small. Uh, after another couple of more boxes like this go on, um, I can probably start harvesting honey. So a little bit of luck, maybe by the fall, start harvesting. Um, Whether on a small scale for recreation or on a large scale for primary income. Here at Backyard Bees, they make use of everything the honey bee has to offer, selling not only honey, but also lotions, lip balms, and other products made from beeswax. Regardless of which camp beekeepers are a part of, they all share the same deep love of bees and an investment in their communities. For this small group, no matter how impassioned, it seemed impossible that they could tackle anything as massive as a global extinction. But a fellow fledgling beekeeper reminded me of the power of the scout when the hive is forced to find a new home. So scout bees, these are the foragers, the ones that know the area. And if a scout finds a good place, she'll go back to the swarm. And then other scout bees will sense this, they'll put their antenna on her, you know, and they'll get that information and say, oh, wow, she's really excited, I'm going to go check that out. So this, there's only like maybe 100 or so scouts, and there's, remember there's like 10,000 bees hanging there. So only a very small fraction of them are doing the scout work, so it's, it's a pretty efficient uh, sort of information gathering process, and then a pretty efficient debate and sort of decision process, which uh, I don't know, that humans could probably learn something from. Just as the single scout is responsible for moving the entire hive, I hope this scout can move you to guide the direction of your community. You can be the first of many to help those around you by keeping bees.